Good morning. Welcome back to Debrek. And it's now 26 minutes to 7 o'clock on this 11th day of January 2021. And it's time to take a look at some of the stories making headlines. And I want us to begin by taking a look at uh, what we're expecting to happen uh, today, being the 11th of January. We know that uh, at the uh, corridors of power, corridors of justice, that is that the Supreme Court Ch Chief Justice David Maraga hands over formally to acting CJ after today, that is uh, DCJ uh, Philomena Muilo. What we know is that uh, she'll, um, she'll be taking over uh, from uh, CJ Maraga so that um, he retires after today. And what we also know is that uh, there'll be a special ceremony at the Supreme Court to pay tribute to the Chief Justice who is retiring. And we should be seeing that happening later today. But also what we know is that we're expecting the senator of uh, Muranga, that is Irongo Kangata, to address a press conference later in the day. And he will be responding to some of the concerns that have come after his controversial letter to the president talking about the popularity of the Building Bridges Initiative uh, Constitutional Amendment Bill within central Kenya. Of course, many things have been said, many questions have been raised, and Kangata is now appearing after a week of uh, confusion and a lot of uh, accusations from different quarters of politics. Also, we are watching the Nairobi race because we know that uh, the uh, former governor or the impeached governor, Mike Sonko, has already uh, promised to withdraw some cases that he has had in court. And we also know that um, uh, there is intention by the county assembly to go ahead and vet a deputy governor nominee, Anne Kananu, which is also being opposed by different quarters. Of course, the courts um, suspended the by-election that was uh, to be uh, taking place on the 18th of February 2021. We will be waiting to see what direction that race takes. But also back in studio, we're also focusing on different uh, stories, making headlines. And uh, to introduce the panel, I want to begin by Gadi Gashagwa, Member of Parliament uh, for Matira Constituency. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you, Sam. And happy new year being the first show of the year that you're here. Asante. We also have uh, Gladys Boss, the, the second time. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> second time, she's the woman representative from uh, Wasingishu. Karibu sana. Thank you. And we have uh, Dr. Alfred Motua, Governor of Machakos. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, and Karibu. I'm glad to be here. Good morning. Great. And uh, we also have uh, Opi Wandai, the Member of Parliament for Ugunja, joining us via Skype. Good morning, Mweshmua, um, and Happy New Year. Good morning, Mr. Great. Happy New Year. Great. And I want us to start the conversation because we have so much to unpack on the, on the show. I want us to start by looking at the BBI question because that letter that Senator Kangata is supposed to be addressing is in as far as what he thinks is the popularity of the Building Bridges Initiative within the Central Kenya. I don't know if they have the slides uh, for the TIFA poll, the TIFA poll that came out sometime last week indicating that so far out of uh, the Kenyans that were polled, it would indicate that 26% of Kenyans would not participate in voting should a referendum be called. 16% are unsure of uh, taking part. 32% would vote no because of varied reasons if uh, the poll was to be conducted today or the referendum was to be conducted today. Only 29% would vote yes, um, that is in support of the document. And 15% say that they know something about the BBI contents and proposals. 84% of Kenyans still not familiar with BBI. Imagine that. 84% are uh, ignorant of the BBI document. Then 44% want, want the referendum held before the 2022 general election, and 12% uh, want it held on the same day as the election, 31% want it afterwards. That is after the 2022 elections, and 14% are unsure when they would want to see uh, the polls happening. But at the same time, there have been several contestations, including um, the voice of uh, Irungo Kangata. I want to begin with you, Honorable Rigadi Gashago, because you come from the same region as Senator Kangata. Um, if when you are looking at the Tifa poll versus what Senator Kangata is saying, how much of that is true and what do you think needs to be done uh, because this process continues? Well, thank you very much, Sam. First and foremost, uh, I want to congratulate uh, Senator Kangata for joining a few board leaders from the region who genuinely love the president and uh, express that love by telling the truth as it is. It's rather late, he should have come a little bit earlier. Some of us have been doing it for the last three years and uh, telling the president the truth as it is. As elected leaders, we spend our time on the ground with the people and uh, what Kangata said is true. In fact, the percentage he gave is not correct. It's lower than that. Mm -hmm. One, nobody has seen the BBI 
and uh, even the poll that was done the other day, they said 84% have not seen. You are pushing something down to people they have not read. People from the central Kenya region are people who have gone to school. And there are people who are proud of being allowed to make their own decisions. And they hate things being thrown down to them by force. They hate chest thumping. You know, this can't stop reggae and all that. That nonsense doesn't work in that region. They, they hate it. It is, uh, they are communities of persuasion. They like being persuaded by reason. So the approach of selling the BBI from the word go is wrong in that region. Nobody has taken time to explain to them mm -hmm. what the BBI purports. And in their own reasoning, because we spend a lot of time with them, they don't think it's a priority. They think that the priority for this country for now is dealing with the COVID-19. They think there is a real crisis about the schools. There are no facilities, there are no masks, there is no water, there are no classrooms. And a lot of businesses were also destroyed during the COVID-19, uh, you know, that period. Mm -hmm. And they think if the government has any money that is available, that money should be used to assist the people to get back their businesses. You know, they find the priority so, is wrong. So despite the formation of a five-member committee... It's a waste of time. Let me tell you, Sam. You know, you know sometimes I heard uh, Professor Nyong speak very well. He said people are looking for simple solutions to a complex problem. The issue is not the style of selling the BBI or who is selling it. It's that the people of that region find it reckless and irresponsible at this time, given what they are facing and what they are going through. You know, some of our people, their businesses are totally destroyed. Mm -hmm. And there is no money, you know. The governor here can confirm to us. The county governments have not been receiving money for almost four months. These governors are actually trying. They are surviving. I, do, I don't even know how they are surviving to pay salaries and to get things moving. And people have not been paid. There are so many problems okay. that our people are finding it irresponsible to put aside 14 billion yeah, mm -hmm. to change the constitution when in their view they don't think it is urgent. Okay, I'll get back to you. Honorable so so I, want really, I really want to congratulate uh, Senator Kangata for quitting the choir of praise and worship <laughs> and for, worship being, for being very, very bold and being <laughs> truthful. You know, some of us who love President Kenyatta, his true friends are ourselves who tell him as it is, you know, because instead of cheating him, that okay. praise and worship choir must be dismantled. You know, okay. we want people who must be able to speak the truth as right. it is. All right, so I'll get back to you. But uh, Dr. Motua, I saw a statement attributed to you congratulating the senator. You even wanted to buy him tea. So today mm. he's addressing, have you had an opportunity to buy him tea? And <laughs> does it bother you that a region that overwhelmingly supported the president would say that um, they are not interested in such a process that would appear the president is so committed to seeing that it would actually improve the fortunes for the region and the country? Well, it is not surprising. Yes, I, I, I got to buy Senator Kangata uh, a glass of mango juice uh, the other day, and uh, we had a good conversation. And uh, well, I lo I'm looking at it slightly differently mm -hmm. than when Shimiwa here. You see, for me, when I saw Senator Kangata coming out and talking about what he talked about, it may not have been the right approach, mm -hmm. but he was telling the truth about how people feel in his region. I know. I was there. I did my listening tours in Nyeri, I did my listening tours in, uh, in Laikipia, in Nanyuki, in Meru, in Mount Kenya region, and I could tell. But it is based on ignorance. People are not aware mm -hmm. or do not really know the benefits of the BBI. We have to be cognizant of the fact that there's been a lot of propaganda. A lot of propaganda. Uh, Mwishimua here has been, uh, he knows what is going on on the ground. There's been a lot of vilification because this country, especially in the Montaigne region, is divided into two. There's a group that is supporting uh, Mwishmiwa Ruto, another group is supporting the president, and there's a divide right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So the group that is supporting uh, uh, Deputy President William Ruto has really been on the ground, and I have to give them credit. And there's been a lot of propaganda. People have been told a lot of things. Propaganda by who? Uh, propaganda by teams that are opposed to the BBI. Basically, P teams are lied to the deputy president. And I'm talking about what people are telling me when I sat down with them in Nyeri, in Nanyuki, and others. And so, as a result, and I agree with Moshmua here, people really are afraid of the BBI in central Kenya. They're afraid because they've been told so many things, bad things about them. Now, 
They have a reason to be afraid because as uh, the polls show, as is pointed out, nobody from the other side has come really to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. It's like they're being told you have to agree to the BBI. And as you said, uh, Mount Kenya is one of the regions that has been very lucky in this country, to central Kenya. You are well educated, you have power, you have roads, you have water, your economic status is very high. You you so need so people, you, you mean like electricity? People, people. Or political power? Yeah, uh, when I talk about electricity, both powers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so they can read and decipher for themselves. So they don't like, as uh, Moshmo is saying, things being pushed down their throat. So for me, the problem, the BBI in Central Province, is a problem of perception and propaganda. Mm -hmm. And if President Uhuru wants BBI to succeed, what he needs to do is to get his act together and his people together mm -hmm. and to sell. Because in the same vein mm -hmm. that Mushimu um, Agashoko is talking about, people in Central Kenya are very smart and they know a good thing for themselves. But you see, right now, they don't know what the BBI is about. So they are making choices based on propaganda and negative perception. Th that's very interesting, and I'll be waiting to hear what uh, Gladys Boss will be saying. But before we do so, let's mm -hmm. listen to what the president said about um, uh, the BBI spirit as he tried to convince the country on the reasons behind it and why he chose it, uh, or he saw it fit uh, to come together with um, his brother, Ray Lodinga. Na hapo ndipo hata msingi wa BBI ulijitokeza. Kwa sababu tulikuwa tunasema tuangalie shida za wakenya ni nini. Na pamoja ni kwanjia gani tutatatua. Tuhakikishe tumeongeza kwanza kiwango cha pesa ambao itaingia kwa wananchi kule mashinani. Na ndiyo mambo yale ambaye tumesikia ikitajwa tajwa hapa. Mwananchi ya weze kukaribiwa na pesa ambaye itamusaidia kwa maendeleo yake kule mashinani. Jamii ni ubaya wa kusema hiyo ni nini. Kunaye. Na tukasema, tunataka tuwe na serikali ambaye hakuna jamii ambaye itasikia. Ati uchaguzi umeisha, kuna mushindwa na mushindani. Kwa mambo ya kabila, tukasema kutakuwa mushindwa, uli atashinda na uli atashindwa sio kwa misingi ya kikabila lakini kwa misingi ya sera na maendeleo na mipangilio ya vyama ambavyo vinalete wa Kenya wote pamoja that was our objective right so that's the president uh, but gladys boss um mm -hmm. governor mutu accuses your side of politics of being behind the propaganda and why uh, kenyans in central kenya do not know much about the bbi just uh, just about the fears how much responsibility do you take and have you taken responsibility in your region to educate them all about BBI and what the truth is about it? Would you? I think uh, the BBI, is a, it's a no-brainer. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that BBI is unpopular in all parts of the country. Maybe in Raila Odinga staff only, that maybe is the only place it's popular. The reason why it's unpopular, it's because it is not a people's initiative. It is an initiative of a private initiative of two persons, Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. And it is being driven down and forced on people and being called a, a people initiative. Hence the reason why it is unpopular. What would you call a people's initiative? People's initiative is when they're clamoring for the changes and the request for those amendments comes out of the people. Not when it comes out of the steps of Harambe House by two persons and then developed into a people's initiative. That is the danger that we are going. And I'd like to point out what uh, His Excellency has just said in that clip. He has said that the BBI is intended to ensure that our politics is no longer about tribe. Yes, he, you, you really heard that on that clip. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, the day before yesterday, mm -hmm. the president himself actually mentioned tribe. Mm -hmm. He sank so low that he began to, to seed, put the seeds of ethnic hatred in this country. In fact, the president is guilty of contravening Section 13 of the National Cohesion and Integration Act because the, the act defines het, uh, ethnic hatred mm -hmm. as pa when a person makes utterances that are likely to stir up ethnic hatred from one ethnic group against another ethnic group. Basically, what the president said uh, at uh, Sabatia, is that the all other 
true ethnic groups of Kenya mm -hmm. must rally against the two ethnic groups because they are the only ones who have had a person from their community as the president. Mm -hmm. And he's, the president is just lucky that he's a sitting head of state and therefore <laughs> that he cannot be charged with the offences under Section 13. I see it very differently. Yeah, uh, but uh, he's uh, in uh, uh, Because we 13. don't expect a president to mention tribe. When we elected Uhuru Kenyatta, it's, it's for the things he stood for, the manifesto. Mm -hmm. And we don't believe that it is the two communities that have been president. Honorable boss, allow me, allow me to conclude the conversation around VB. I will come back to that later on because I can see Dr. Motua. Uh, but it has a link with what it. he said on VBI. Sh sure yes. thing, we'll get back to that. But first, Opio and I, because you're, oh, you're following this conversation, um, actually, you didn't tell me where you are. I don't know if you know Gunja or in Nairobi, but all the same, when you listen to all these exchange about uh, the popularity of the BBI, the propaganda question, and how much is known, how much of responsibility would you take? Because I assume that you support the BBI process. Have you been communicating to your people so that they understand what's happening, or you're just depending on the popularity from the top? Uh, you know, but uh, Sam, mm -hmm. uh, when I listen to my good member uh, parliament, I see uh, a lot of self-denial. Uh, 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 why did I say this? Uh, some, you know that uh, the BBI process is a legal process. And uh, most of our colleagues should understand that uh, once the process of signatures verification is complete mm -hmm. and the bill is taken to the county assemblies, uh, they should go through a process and it is after the county assemblies have actually passed it that the real work of taking this document to the people in terms of explaining its merits and benefits will start but let me say this uh, it is important to understand that bbi is not just a central kenya issue mm -hmm. neither is it a, a, a western kenya issue or a coastal kenya issue bbi is a kenyan project and the problem we have is that part our section of kenyan politicians that is aligned to the deputy president has perceived the bbi which is a product of the handshake mm -hmm. as a project which is meant to stop the deputy president from assuming the presidency that is the biggest problem that is the elephant in the room which you must confront as politicians and i can tell you because I've been around uh, for some time now, mm -hmm. that my colleagues who are oscillating around the deputy president are mm -hmm. dancing themselves late before the real dance begins. Let them hold their courses. And I'm very happy with the results of the Taipa, Taipa uh, uh, opinion polling. Mm -hmm. Because it basically means that Kenyans uh, haven't made up their minds. And the reason why they haven't made up their mind is that we haven't gone out there to campaign for the BBI. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that time will come. And when the rubber meets the road, all these uh, groupies uh, will be... When is that time be, coming? Uh, because Honorable Wandai, I like the word you use, oscillating. I don't know how you would say that human <laughs> beings are oscillating around <laughs> another. But all the same, uh, when is that time coming? Because the process is on. Like you said, that uh, the people around the deputy president are already um, giving their side of the story. Uh, Dr. Motua says that uh, they have been spreading propaganda. I mean, information is well, moving. What's your strategy? Well, we see strategy is ours. For those of us who support the BBI, we have our own strategy of campaigning for the document. But, but again, it, the reason why they are going around and propagating uh, uh, falsehoods is because they are panicking. And we have got no reason us to panic at all. Because we know Kenyans are very, very, very uh, objective uh, people, and they will make their decisions based on what is in their best interest. I have heard the argument that uh, the BBI is not a priority, that we have to deal with COVID-19, we have to deal with schools, we have to deal with the what have you. Now, uh, uh, Sam, mm -hmm. BBI, apart from uh, other uh, uh, reforms, administrative, legal, and otherwise, is also about constitutional changes. Mm -hmm. which is going to be the first constitutional change after the 2010 promulgation of this constitution. Now, at what point shall we say now, Kenyan, 
has dealt with all its problems. Now we can deal with uh, reforms that have to do with the changing the constitution. It is a lie, okay? We can uh, chew gum as we scale the stairs. We can deal with the COVID-19. <laughs> but but we, we can deal with school fees <laughs> issues as we implement the BBI. It's, not a, it's a no brainer really. You see, so <laughs> all this hot air is not uh, helping Kenyans. Kenyans must remain focused. And we cannot mix the two, the BBI and succession politics. Okay. That is the problem we have. And we must tell but, our but does, does it bother you, Honorable yes. Wandai, that only 29% would vote for the document if the referendum were to be held today, meaning 71% of the risk of uh, not voting for it? As you say that, you must understand what percentage is undecided, uh, sir. <laughs> you know, that poll is uh, premature, even though it is good as an indicator of mm -hmm. what is out there. Okay. We are not living in denial. But we must appreciate the fact that everything has got its time. Mm -hmm. When the rubber meets the road, I'm telling you, Sam, uh, the BBI is going to be approved by not less than 60% of the Kenyan population. Oh, okay, you said vote. that 60% uh, is what will approve the document. Let's listen to what uh, President Kenyatta said in regards to that letter by Senator Kangata, who is expected to address the media today to clarify some of those issues. And he was speaking at the funeral of uh, Hannah Mudavadi, the mother of ANC party leader Musala Mudavadi. Musione Simba Menyeshewa Mufikirie Nipaka. Kila kitu na wakati wake. Sisi ni wana demokrasia. We believe in democracy. Watu wa piga pige ile wanataka kupiga pika, waandike ile mabarua, wanataka kuandika andika. I am in charge of this government and I am in control of what we are doing. Tunaelewana wenzangu? Eh, sitaki mtu akuni lecture mimi. I know where I am and I am very clear about where I am going. Tunaelewana wenzangu? So he knows where he is going and it's very clear to him. Mm. Yet you're here uh, saying that uh, the praise and worship song by Senator Kangata is over. And it's time to tell the truth. I mean, what should the president do as a matter of urgency, if he had to be asked? Well, uh, uh, the president must do what Kangata did. What Kangata did over Christmas, and not just Kangata, by the way. Uh, you know, Christmas period is when leaders go home. Leaders came and sat Kangata down. And they told him, uh, Senator, you have never lost an election. You stood as a councillor, you were elected. You moved on to member of parliament, you were elected. You moved on uh, to senator, you are elected. We have plans to make you governor. But as it is today, you have lost it and we cannot elect you. What you are propagating today is against what we want. This BBI thing, we don't want it. Because How we don't factual think is that information? No, Kangata, if, even last night he was on Kredembe, he confirmed. He met uh, 200 leaders and they told him, you see what you do, Sam, when you are a leader who knows what he is doing. You call the people who mean well for you and you ask them to tell you the truth as it is. And they tell you how it is. And they told Kangata, they told him, listen here, Senator, we are through with you. By the end of this year, if you don't disown this thing and get back to your people, you are done. So, what is happening, so Sam? Let me tell you. What because if I'm a politician. That, that would be all taken politics, to be all politics are local. Okay? Mm -hmm. Elections is next year. Reality is dawning on leaders now. And you have to make a decision, by the way, whether you blindly want to follow a retiring president or you want to follow your people. You must make that decision. As somebody, you know the president is retiring, you must look at your own fit as a leader and you must consult the people. What we have done ourselves, what Kangata did over Christmas, is what we do every weekend. All the time we call our people, you ask them, the key ones, like my area, I have 349 people I talk to. After every one month, I call them. I say, please, tell me, what is the ground saying? Because politics is local. What my president, whom I served as a PA, and uh, he used to listen a lot and ask what I would advise the president. Of course, I know I'm too small to purport to advise him. But since you have asked me, I can say, I would want a situation where he can come back to the central Kenya region 
and call the leadership and allow people to tell him and give them time because the meetings we have held with him is a monologue it's him talking other people are not allowed to talk ask gentlemen what is the problem i hear this and this kangata is saying this what is the posi position mm -hmm. and allow people to tell him and listen interact with them and then he can give what he thinks and i know he has many ideas that he can sell but they cannot be sold by force but you, you, you see you see even let me also tell you mm -hmm. the problem of the bbi also has a problem because it's a product of the handshake see the president never sat down with his people about the handshake and he should have sat down with them and explained to them gentlemen i came here and made very bad remarks about Raila Odinga. I said this, I said this, but things have changed because of ABC, ABCD. I would want you to look at things this way. You know, I have thought about it. I have sat with Raila. I think for the betterment of this country, we need to do ABCD. You gentlemen and ladies, I want you to come on board and explain to them what made him make that decision so that he carries, oh, he carries the people along. Have you read the BBI report? Yes, I have. The Constitutional Amendment Bill, have you read it? Yes, I have. Is there anything good you see in there this? There are few things that documents? are good. There are few things that are good. I have absolutely no problem with the increase of 35% to the county government. Only that it's not practical. Because even the 15% uh, governor is not receiving. It's not available. But uh -huh. anyway, given that the economy can improve, so I think it's okay. Therefore, the question, because you said that mm. uh, Senator Kangata is taking this action or this decision because of the reality on the ground. Mm. Therefore, appearing like political ambitions may get in, into the way of the BBI. Don't you think we, we stand the risk of losing a good process because of political ambitions? Because it's you not political ambition. You see, Kangata is just being realistic. It is not Kangata's uh, views. He's taking the views of the people who have elected him and who shall elect him. And to these voters, because this referendum must go to the voters. Okay. At the end of it all, they'll have the final say. They must be convinced. And one of the ways of convincing them is getting the leadership uh, on the same page and not doing what Akina Atwali and Malala were proposing to Uhuru. Right. They were proposing to the president mm -hmm. to take a fimbo and a bakora and whip, come to Mount Kenya and whip all of us who are saying BBI is not good. Th that is very foolish advice. It cannot work. Oh, okay. not, not in the central Kenya region. Let me also tell you, this central Kenya region, you may not know, the governor may not know, they are very rebellious people. They don't like being forced into anything. The British colonialists came to the Mount Kenya and took our land and our women. He had guns, he had grenades, he had bombs, he had planes. The Mount Kenya person had only a panga. They went to the Mount Kenya forest and the Abadea and drove the British out. They are people who cannot be forced into anything. Okay. It is a community of persuasion. Oh, okay, D Dr. Matua, mm -hmm. now you support the VBA, right? Yes. So what do we do? What do you do so that uh, you are able to ensure the success of this entire process without running these risks that uh, it may be swallowed by political ambitions and the mm -hmm. realities mm -hmm. of the ground, mm -hmm. quote-unquote? You know, one of the things, the reason I support the BBI is because when I took, I did like what uh, Mwashimua here did. I took the BBI and I opened the old constitution, the, 20, the new constitution, 2010 constitution, mm -hmm. and I went fresh by fresh. And I looked at the benefits. There are some things really I think could have been done better. But you see, for me, the new, the, the BBI is not overhauling the constitution. New Karabati. If you have a car, and that car is on the road, and you realize that kwamba gurudu mmoja inafanya na mlahi, ni kukaza nati, so the, the car goes well. You realize that the steering wheel is not at the right place. Unaipandisha kidogo. We are not overhauling. Engine unaona ina knock knock kidogo, unaendo unaongeza oil unatengeneza. So what the BBI is doing is not overhauling the constitution. It's just fixing a few problems, clarifying a few things, so that the, the, the car can move properly. And that is what people don't realize. People think that we're overhauling the constitution. We're just fixing a few things, making sure that the brakes don't squeak, making sure that the brakes are better, so that the visor is cleaning better so we can see where we're going. And we're going to have many amendments. It is an amendment. You look at the constitution of the U.S., they talk about now, they talk about the 25th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Why well, they talk about the 25th Amendment, uh, the one they're trying to remove the President Trump with. It's called an amendment. It was not part of the original 
constitution. So this will be the first amendment that you're making in Kenya. Others have made, made amendments. Mwishimu uh, Akashagwa talked about the president's term. And I think that's what the president was talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. When he says he's not uh, Sio Paka, you know, Munafikiri Simba, Munafikiri Nipaka Menyeshewa. And uh, I think the mistake that people are doing is that they're looking at President Uhuru and with the same words that he used, that he's on his way out. He's only got a year and a half. So they're looking at him as a lame duck president. Mm -hmm. Without knowing that you may be a lame duck president, that's what they think he is, but he's a very powerful person. Let me tell you, when you are a president of this country, you're the president, you're running the show up to the end. Why are they clamoring in the US Congress trying to impeach Trump out of office when he's only got 10 days? Why are they saying take over Pence from Trump when it's only 10 days? Mm -hmm. Because you are president with all your powers up to the end. So the people are thinking that President Uhuru's powers are less now mm -hmm. because he's got a year and a half actually deluding <coughs> themselves. And that is the problem because people have started, have stopped focusing on what the Mwananchi wants in fighting poverty, in creating jobs, in ensuring that we have good roads. They are concentrating on who is going to take over after Uhuru leaves the office. The second thing that uh, it's very important that you asked about and was mentioned about the handshake. Let's be realistic here. Let's be realistic. This country was burning. This country was burning. The economy was on a skydive. Walo Ameshiba could not feel it. Mimi naongea kwa niyabe wa nyonge wa inchi yetu ya Kenya. Things were tough. There was so much tension. We saw the president, we saw Raila go to and uh, get himself sworn at uh, Uhuru Park. The country was divided around the middle. Neighbors were looking at each other funny. There was tension. Mm -hmm. Tension. If you walked around, there was tension. The handshake, it was like a panacea. The country came down because for you to have proper economic development, you need political stability. So whatever was born out of the handshake, we cannot just say it is the work of only two people. The BBI was born out of saying, we've had these problems year end every election. How mm -hmm. do you cure this problem? And we have to be realistic. We have to have self-perpetuation. Uh, we cannot just be in a system that continues to kill itself since independence. Every election, kuna vita, kuna vrugu. And finally, Mwishmu um, Kangata, he might have met his leaders and others. Mm -hmm. I don't think he should have written a letter. That may not have been the right approach. But he took courage to tell people the truth. And I think what Kangata talked about is the reality as it is on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the, the people supporting the BBI, the people on the president's side, they should not be criticizing Kangata. They should be sitting down and saying, Kama hii ni ukweli, how do we get out of this hole to ensure we don't fail? So what are you doing in Machakos to popularize it if you support it? We are ensuring that our people know we are waiting for the program to begin. For right now we are concentrating and ensuring that there is enough water for our people. We mm -hmm. cannot be living on BBI all the time. You know, in some parts, we don't live on politics all the time. <laughs> we are not in this, uh, who is going to be taking over. We don't have this psychophatic, uh, you know, relations with others. So we are looking at development. When the time for the BBI going around the ground, we'll take it to the people and we'll let the people decide. Okay. Because we are looking at the advantages. And especially for us, other communities, who have not been in power and enjoyed the benefits of seeing the tarmac roads and all the other things, we are looking at it and saying, aha, Maybe it's going, it's, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be a balancing act. You say you've not been in power. What exactly do you mean? What I mean is this. In this country, as President Uhuru said during the, and I think you'll play the clip uh, later, I, I suspect, uh, my journalistic instincts <laughs> suspect <laughs> the clip is coming very soon. Um, you see, you look at the uh, vice presidents and the presidents of this country. Mm -hmm. They have come from two communities. And it is their right. Because nobody vice sends president? a postcard. Nobody I think Kalozo Kalozo Mshiko Mshiko was once a vice president. So no, was Kalozo Kalozo Kalozo. no, I said the majority of. Maybe that's the word I left off. Majority <laughs> of <laughs> presidents and vice presidents. Mm. You combine all of them. When you look at... Uh, and there's nothing wrong because nobody sends a postcard to say to be born a Kikuyu, a Luo, a Kalenjin, a Kamba, a Masai. Nobody sends a postcard. You're born. But we live in an environment whereby we have got so much heightened political and tribal base laid to us by the colonial powers that we have to ask ourselves, what can we do so that each person stops feeling tribal and start feeling Kenyan? You see, at times, uh, let, let me give you an example. Uh -huh. When the Republic of South Africa came in, we have to be very careful. 
when the Republic of South Africa was formed, Nelson Mandela stood and said that now we are going to have equality. You are going to be judged on your merit. You are going to be the person who is going to get a job because you are qualified for the job. Which, which is what he said, so remember? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we all said, yes. He remember discrimination, your tribe, remember discrimination, your color, to a channel mm -hmm. So what happened? You advertised for a job, you want uh, a lawyer, you want a mechanic, you want all these things, and these are the qualifications and everything. So what happens? Who had the privilege of going to university? Who had the privilege of getting the experience? It was the same white people mm -hmm. who had kept the blacks in the slums. So who gets all the jobs? The same white people. That's why they transformed me and said, we got political freedom, but now we are now in economic apartheid. South Africa had to come in and start the black movement, black empowerment black movement, black movement black so that that black empowerment movement mm -hmm. could now bring the people <coughs> to power. So what is Huru talking about? Huru is talking about saying, for us to diffuse this problem of tribalism, that it has to be this one group against the other group. And let me tell you, if you are a Kikuyu, or if you are a Kalenjin, no, mm -hmm. I'm just finished. If you're a Kikuyu, you're a I'm, I'm just, I'm just winding down. Yeah. If you're a Kikuyu or a Kalenjin, mm -hmm. and you have been in this country, and you have been, uh, you have served as a president, uh, your person has served as a president for several times, you may not realize that other communities ask themselves, why is it only these communities? It's a very, very Dr. bad so thing we, to we ask. We have that conversation. Yes. Whether, uh, just, just, just allow me. We have that conversation whether it's um, presidency for a tribe or for an individual. Or for after a community. The break, because we'll be listening to the voices of uh, President Kenyatta as well as uh, DP Ruto. We are with uh, Rigadi Gashagwa. We are with the uh, Honorable Gladys Boss. We are with Dr. Mutua as well as uh, Opio Wandai, the Member of Parliament for Gunja. We're back. After this short break, you can text in your views, 22422, or, or text us. That is our tutors at Citizen TV Kenya. Some get to the hashtag to use this day break after the moment.